the best-selling Gibson of all time? Hey everybody, Jace Allen here. Welcome back to the channel. Is the Gibson SG Standard the best-selling Gibson guitar of all time? Well, that depends on who you ask. There seems to be a lot of controversy about the statement made on the Gibson website back in 2009 about the Gibson SG Standard being the best-selling Gibson guitar of all time. In an article posted on their website by writer Dave Hunter, the title of the article states, The Best-Selling Gibson of All Time, the SG Standard. The article goes on to talk about the SG and a little bit of its history and some of the players that use the SG, but it doesn't back up the title's claim with any sort of sales data. So there has been a lot of talk in online guitar communities about whether this article is accurate or not. The article has since been removed from Gibson's website. As you can see here, I'm using the Wayback Machine to uh, pull up this article from April 14th of 2009, written by Dave Hunter, who is also written for uh, Guitar World Magazine and is currently now writing for Vintage Guitar Magazine. So there's only one sort of tidbit of evidence in this article that leads you to believe that the SG is the best-selling uh, Gibson guitar. Uh, and it says, in order to revive the Les Paul, Gibson undertook a radical departure from the original form and the new SG landed with a major splash in each of its first three years of availability. The model, officially renamed the SG Standard in 1963, sold more than 6,000 units, swapping the total of approximately 1,700 Les Paul standards sold between 1958 and 1960. Now, some other articles that I've read uh, basically say that the SG was developed by Gibson to compete with the Fender Stratocaster because the Les Paul was a, a heavier guitar uh, and there was a lot more production time that went into creating one. And uh, Leo Fender had created the Telecaster and the Stratocaster, and these were designed sort of modular. They had bolt-on necks, they had thinner bodies, uh, they were flat, they weren't contoured like the Les Paul. And so those guitars, and I think they were probably more affordable, and so those guitars, you know, the sales of those guitars took off, and so Gibson decided they needed uh, a guitar to compete uh, with the Fender Stratocaster. And so the article I read said that that was the SG, and the SG probably through, you know, a lot of advertising effort by Gibson, to try to outsell uh, the Fender Stratocaster, you know, probably did sell more SGs during that time frame uh, than they did Les Pauls. But is it the best-selling Gibson uh, guitar of all time? Well, that's up for some debate. Uh, a lot of people on Reddit are uh, having discussions about it. Uh, it's still going on to this day, the debate about whether uh, the SG is Gibson's best-selling guitar. But besides from that, is the SG uh, a good guitar? Well, let's check it out. I happen to have a Epiphone SG standard uh, in the 61 style, and so let's check it out. Okay, so I've never, never owned an SG. I've never played an SG, and uh, so this is kind of new for me. Um, I've always... I never really cared for them. I don't know why, but I've developed a, a great appreciation for uh, the guitar. So I started doing some uh, shorts on my other channel, Rock and Replay, and I, I've done quite a few uh, short form videos about Angus Young and his guitars and his setup and his sound and stuff like that. And so I've listened to a lot of interviews uh, with Angus about uh, the SG guitar, and he likes the SG because he thinks it fits because uh, he's a small guy, and so he says he thinks it fits a smaller uh, person uh, quite a bit better because they're lighter than the Les Paul. Okay, so this is the Epiphone SG Standard 61. So it's patterned after the uh, SG made in 1961. Uh, beautiful gloss, semi-transparent red finish on it. It has the... Uh, set neck, um, dual humbuckers, three-way switch, 
a separate volume and tone for each of the pickups. It's got 22 uh, frets. It's got the nice trapezoid inlays. I think this is an Indian laurel uh, fretboard on this. This is solid mahogany. Uh, it's got the cool vintage tuning keys on it with this sort of these plastic uh, knobs on them. Looks like this could be either a bone or a tusk nut. Uh, the neck is bound all the way around. That's pretty nice. And then I like this style because the pick guard is only off to one side. Some of them have the pick guard where it surrounds the pickups. And then some of them have the Vibrola uh, vibrato on them. Uh, I don't use vibrato very much at all. If you watch my channel, you know that. And so I got this one uh, without the vibrato. It's just got the tunematic uh, bridge on it. Right out of the box, this is brand new. I got it uh, from a vendor off of Reverb. Actually, I got it from American Musical Supply, but I bought it through Reverb. And uh, it's, it's set up really well. Uh, bending on some of the higher frets, uh, the, the string is kind of bottoming out. So I might take the fret file and file those down a little bit. But the action is really nice. It plays really well. Um, these are serialized, stamped in the back. They are made in China. Um, really nice uh, pearloid inlays in the front. I don't know if that's actual mother of pearl or if it's synthetic, but they look really nice. Uh, one of the things that I was concerned about these guitars is they put the strap button in the back. And uh, I've never been a fan of having that in the back because in my opinion, the guitar will kind of lean forward on you when you when you put the button in the back. Um, we'll talk about that in a minute. So, and then the frets on this are are really nice. They're I'm not sure if they're the medium jumbo or what, but I like them. They're not they're not super tall. Um, if you watch my channel uh, quite a bit, you know that I have problems with. Like the, some Gibsons or are, are Les Paul style guitars have super tall frets. And so I have a tendency to press down really hard. And so it, it sort of knocks those strings out of tune a little bit. And so I get criticized a lot for my guitars being out of tune. And, uh, but these have pretty decent, they're not super tall. They're not super wide. Uh, seems to be nice. Uh, the body is thin. I think these are a one and a half inch thick body so they're not yeah one and a half inch thick so they're not uh one and three quarters so they you know they fit really well they you know they're they're not super thick and then the neck on this thing is really thin it's uh i think it's a wider nut than a stratocaster yeah this is the one and three quarter inch wide so if you have fat fingers like I do, a little bit wider nut is nice. But then the fact that the, that the neck thickness there is really thin. It's really comfortable. And it's, it's kind of a D shaped, a flat D. Uh, and so it's really comfortable to play. And then the fact that the neck, it's, let me see, how do I explain this? It's a 24 and three quarter inch scale length, which is also kind of nice. But the, the neck is like forward of, it's like hanging. I mean, look at the, where the, you know, where the last uh, fret is. It's almost past the neck joint. And that's because the neck joint actually where it attaches to the body is actually underneath this first pickup. So the neck comes down and then it's got a little, a little ledge like that comes in and then they glue it in there. And so it's, it's, I guess you could say cantilevered out. Whereas if you look at a Stratocaster, let's look at an actual Strat. Look at how much of the neck is inside the joint you know your your final your final fret is buried inside you know the body 
And so even though they have these cutaways, and, and some of the guitars like the Firefly guitar I have, have these deeper contours here, and then the, the, the neck uh, heel is tapered, and that's supposed to allow you to get up in here, but it's still kind of, at least for me, it's kind of hard to get up into these higher notes because of all this material back here. With the SG, I mean, you're 12, you're 12, well, 20, 21st and 22nd frets are right, are right here. I mean, I can get down there easy, and this is really, really thin back here. There's not a ton of, of wood, so I found it really a lot more comfortable to get down in here. So, one thing that I before I bought this, I did a little bit of looking around on the internet, and one of the complaints that people had was that it's it's really a neck heavy uh, guitar, and I found that to be to be true. You put a strap on that doesn't have a lot of grab to it, and it it does it drops. I mean, it drops quite quite a bit, but the thing is. When you hold it, it it feels comfortable. You can you know you can you can prop it here with your arm. I mean it's not so heavy that it's like pulling on you. You can you can hold it pretty easily. And then another thing that I I find interesting about this guitar is the neck feels like it's out farther away from you. I'm not sure how to explain it, but when I play a guitar, I feel like I'm I'm kind of contorted because I have pretty long arms. I'm a six foot tall dude, and so I have long arms and I got fat fingers, and so to me, it's hard to play a regular guitar. And I don't know how people play guitars, you know, slung way down. I almost like mine jazz style, where it's like it's way up, so you can because it's more comfortable because when it's down here I feel like my wrist is you know like I can't get to the frets but this one it's like the whole neck and everything is has been pushed out to the to the left and so when you're when you're sitting here holding it you're basically looking down to these higher frets so you can play down here and then out here it's more comfortable because you're 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 reaching farther and i don't know if that makes sense but ergonomically it's a very different feeling uh to to play one of those whereas you get the strat of course i don't have a strap on this but and you're more you're more over top of the ninth and twelfth fret, and the whole neck feels like it's 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 you know, and so for me, like if you're playing down here with it, now now I've got my, I mean look how much my wrist has to bend to get, you know, which is why I like a guitar up here because then my wrist isn't, you know, hyper extended. Maybe I'm just not very flexible guys you know guys play with their guitars way down here and I don't I don't know how they do it but you know but then you know so I don't know I just think it's a very comfortable guitar I was surprised I was pretty surprised how different the guitar felt to any other guitar that I've played so maybe Angus Young is right maybe you know ergonomically this guitar made sense for him being a little dude and if you watch interviews with him holding one of these things the guitar looks giant size <laughs> next to him but man he could play that thing and uh so yeah they're they're comfortable string spacing is awesome uh so how does it sound let's plug it in and check it out okay everybody i got this uh all set up uh 
course, I'm running through my Marshall. Uh, this is the Origin 20. I did a review on that a, a little bit while back. Um, so let's uh, see how this thing sounds. Okay, so let's tune this thing up. Uh, I get a lot of criticism that my guitars are out of tune, but I think a lot of it has to do with the way I play. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that uh, I'm reviewing guitars right out of the box uh, with no setup or anything, fresh strings. So a lot of times they'll go out of tune, so. Okay, so I've mic'd up the, the cabinet here with the Marshall, uh, this M with an SM57 uh, going right into uh, going right into uh, Reaper Session. Like I said, it's really comfortable to play. I'm, I'm really surprised at how uh, ergonomic it is for a design from the 60s. So this particular one, like I said, is Epiphone. Uh, it's got really nice pickups in it. They sound, they sound really good. So that's on uh, what the... That's the neck pickup. And of course, you can adjust the tone and volume of each pickup individually. Okay, this is the middle. And the bridge. So yeah, there we go. Uh, let me uh, throw it on my Fender amp. We'll do some clean tones. And uh, actually, let me crank up the gain on this real quick. So there you go, that's pretty uh, pretty distorted. Probably have to do some EQ uh, on that amp because I've got it set up for, I think, like the Stratocasters or one of these other guitars. So it sounded a little bit muddy at the really, really high gain. So I don't know if that's, you know, an issue with the, the guitar itself or if the amp just needs to be tweaked. But let's uh, check it out with the... Uh, Fender. Okay, this is a Fender Super Champ XD. Uh, this is sort of a hybrid, they call a hybrid tube amp. Um, it's a tube digital combo. I don't know exactly how that all works. Uh, sounds pretty good, but the uh, Marshall, I can't get to do clean tones. Uh, so we'll try this out on the Fender. And 
tune up again, make sure we're in tune. Oh, it stayed in tune really good, uh, even with the, the some of the bending I was doing on it. And that's the middle middle pickup position, middle switch. the bridge or uh, neck pickup. Okay, so there you go. That's the Gibson SG Standard 61. Uh, again, I think this is this might become one of my favorite uh, guitars. I think this one's definitely a keeper. This one's going to stay. Um, again, I like I like the wider nut, the uh, inch and three quarter inch. <laughs> the inch and three quarter nut width is really comfortable uh, to play. Uh, the 24 and 3 quarter inch scale length. I think I kind of like that better too. I don't know why. Um, it just sounds really good. It's a nice looking uh, guitar. Um, I like the vintage look to it. The, the pots or the, the volume and tone knobs are kind of uh, old school looking. Um, so it's a really neat... A neat guitar, and it's. Uh, I'm. I wonder what the fretboard radius is. The fretboard radius, I think, is also pretty. Uh, a pretty high number. It might be 14 because it's pretty flat. So yeah, really comfortable to play. I'm really surprised. Uh, even standing up, uh, playing it with the strap, is really comfortable even despite the neck dive on it because just the way it's i don't know the way your body positions to hold it um it doesn't really because some guitars you're like you're like feel like you're lifting it with your left your fret hand whereas this one it's it's light enough that you can just kind of prop it up with your arm and it's not uncomfortable it's it's i can't quite explain it but it's yeah nice guitar so if you've ever been on the fence about uh, an SG style uh, guitar you might want to look into getting this I don't know how this compares to the modern SG's they might have a thicker body I know some of them have bolt-on necks so that's going to create a lot of uh, you know there's gonna be a lot more material down there where the neck joint is so it's going to be harder to get up to those upper frets um, so I would recommend getting one like this, this, the 61 style standard. Um, yeah, man, it's, uh, I'm pretty, I'm pretty surprised. I'm, I'm pretty, uh, pretty happy with it. Uh, this one was actually not exactly cheap. Uh, this is probably one of the most expensive guitars that I've ever bought. Uh, let's see, where is...
So yeah, I got this one from American Musical Supply off of Reverb, and they sent me a deal on it. So with tax and everything, yeah, so they're normally five forty nine. So yeah, so their regular five forty nine. That's the the brand new retail price, and because I'm, you know, I'm on Reverb, and you watch something on Reverb, and they'll send you a, a an offer, basically that's you know a, a little bit better deal, and so this is from American Musical Supply, and their offer was four ninety four, which is just about 50 bucks off and shipping was free but then tax was another 30 bucks so I paid five twenty three dot five hundred and twenty three dollars and seventy five cents that was my my total total and uh, yeah it's so it's one of the more expensive guitars I've ever bought but it's it's I think it's well worth it um, obviously the build quality is gonna be good it's it's an epiphone but it's I mean it's made in China um, but you know, whatever, um, maybe someday I'll get my hands on an American made actual Gibson, but we'll see, we'll see what happens. So anyway, enough rambling. That's the Gibson or the Epiphone SG standard 61. I'm Jace Allen. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.